Hey guys, welcome to Gigavolt. This is video three in our series on how to use lab equipment for Conestoga College. Um, what we're going to be covering today is how to use the signal generator. And I just want to say that we're going to be covering some more advanced stuff. We're just starting with the basics right now, and as we work our way forward, we're going to get to more advanced topics. So thank you for tuning in, and I hope you like the video. Alright, so this is our signal generator. I've started with it off just to show you right from the beginning how it boots up. So one of the things while it boots up is this is channel 1 here, and this is channel 2, but it's a TTL counter, which means you only get a square wave out of it that coincides with the sine wave or whatever is coming out of channel 1. And by default, the outputs are off, so you're going to have to push the output button to turn this on once you have your settings set up here. So one of the things that messes people up is if you hit this, you can set the period, and a lot of people, it'll boot up and it'll be in frequency, for example, and you'll want to set a specific period. This is how you do it. You just hit this button, it switches between the two. And as you can see, one millisecond is equal to one kilohertz. And if I change this to five kilohertz over here, I get an option. I can say five microhertz, five millihertz, hertz, kilohertz, or megahertz. So for fun, let's actually say five megahertz. Okay, and if I hit this, we can see that that's equal to a period of 200 nanoseconds. It does the math for us and converts it automatically. So it's a nice, easy way to check what your period is going to be over on the oscilloscope. Now, for amplitude, we just hit amplitude here, and we have peak to peak. And if we hit it again, we actually can have just um, total uh, voltage uh, for the high side. We can set it uh, to say 5 volts peak to peak and then we can actually have it with a DC component so it's actually uh, either partially above zero all the time or entirely positive voltages at all times so right now basically it's going to always be 5 volts even at its lowest value and at its highest value it's going to be 7.5 volts correction <laughs> correction uh, it's peak to peak, so it's actually going to be subtracting 2.5 volts at one point. So the lowest point on the waveform is going to be 2.5 volts, and the highest point is going to be uh, 7.5 volts, which is why our offset is uh, 5 volts. Basically, we're changing the center point of the waveform from 0 to 5 volts by setting offset here. Let's put that back down to 0. Um, there's different options here as well that appear depending on the waveform. So for the sine wave, we can uh, actually depict where it actually starts when we're sending the waveform. And uh, this is just the position of the waveform. And it really won't make much of a difference after the first cycle. And we won't really be using that in the course. If we go to square wave here, we can see duty cycle appears. And this basically is how much uh, time it actually spends spends in the high value before going back down to the low value. Uh, again, we can set a DC offset for the square wave, and amplitude and frequency are pretty much the same. The uh, phase on the square wave is a little bit different, in, but you still won't use it. Uh, if we go to ramp, though, um, we actually have to change the frequency. If we go to ramp, we can actually do symmetry. And this is a neat one because it actually changes the slope of the ramp. And we can actually make one side of the ramp steeper than the other side. Again, the offset is the same idea. Same with amplitude and frequency. They stay the same. You can also have a pulse, which is a uh, kind of similar to a logic high, where it just is low and then it goes up high for a short period of time and then back down. We can have random noise, which is useful for testing EMI on something. And we can also have just arbitrary um, noise coming in where it's just a power signal and you get random voltages uh, all over the place. And this can be used to see if anything 
is bad's going to happen to a circuit if the uh, uh, input to it is left uh, floating and isn't ground properly grounded. Uh, that's pretty much it for this. You won't use much else. Uh, the main thing is when you're setting frequency and amplitude, you can use the wheel here to set this, or you can actually um, use the cursors here to move to a value and then type in what you want. And you can see we can have RMS or peak to peak. And that pretty much covers it.